Hey Canucks fans, welcome to Clay's Canucks Commentary for Friday, October the 26th. I'm Clay Emo at Canuck Clay on Twitter. I'm at Clayton Emo on Instagram. I'm a founding member of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club, and this is my Canucks take, all in one take. The Vancouver Canucks return home after their two-game road trip, their quick two-game road trip, with a split. They went 1-1, they beat Vegas on Wednesday night, and then they lost to the Arizona Coyotes last night by a score of 4-1. to one. And you couldn't really ex- expect or hope for more than what they did, given their depleted lineup. Against Vegas, they were missing three regulars. That would be Brock Besser, Elias Pettersson, and Jay Beagle. But then they doubled that after the Vegas Knights went goon squad on them, and they doubled that injury list to six people. So the Canucks were missing their two top D-men, three of their top four forwards, and then their greedy ch- uh, checking line center. So basically, we were missing Tanev, Edler... Besser, Pedersen, Berchi, and Jay Beagle. That's one third of the active roster. I don't know one team that could survive you know, six injuries. That's crazy. That's crazy. And as I talked about in my post-game live stream on YouTube last night, thank you to those of you who joined me. I'm going to talk about a couple of the same similar things here. You couldn't really expect more from the Canucks given that lineup. When you have guys like Derek Pouliot playing bigger minutes in different situations than he's used to. Actually, it wasn't so much that he was playing bigger minutes. I think he still played 17. Okay, that's a bit bigger. 17 or 18 minutes. I think it was Ben Hutton and Troy Stetcher. They had the 24-minute range. Then the other four D-men were all between 17 and 18 minutes, actually. And that was Pouliot, Goodbranson, um, Delzado, and Biega, who, who both drew in the lineup for the first time. But in essence, Pouliot and a guy like Godobin up front, they were probably playing it maybe slightly more minutes, but certainly in bigger situations they were used to. And they're exposed a little bit. With Derek Pouliot, you know, he had that really bad turnover on the, the Arizona second goal when he tried to come out from behind the net and gave it, tried to make a move and lost the puck, fumbled the puck. And, you know, that's two games in a row that Pouliot has made a really poor decision behind his net, uh, leading to a goal, an opposing goal. In fact, yesterday after that, he also made another poor decision that didn't lead to a goal, but it was also behind his net as well. The third Arizona goal was the shorthanded, the backbreaker, and that was Godobin coming off the side, trying to get to Leipzig. And it's not like he saw Leipzig falling over and then decided, oh, I better, I better pass it to him because this is going to be really tricky for him. Let's see how good he is. No, basically, Leipzig was fell just as Godobin had released his pass. So you can't blame Godobin for that. Leipzig tried to get it back to Pouliot at the point, but Pouliot was already retreating because of the two Arizona Coyote forwards that were coming. They come, Pouliot gets a chance to make a play, but it's a very bang-bang play. It's very quick. Uh, puck deflects a Pouliot stick after the initial rush and then they put it behind Anders Nielsen. So Pouliot had a bit of a rough game but to his credit he manned up and he owned it after the game and you know I'm not mad at him but it definitely wasn't his best game ever. I thought Godolman struggled a little bit. Guys up front that were good with Brendan Leitzig was both good and bad. We saw his great skating you know he's not bad with stick handling but he was falling over a lot on the ice shades of Mason Raymond. He's also, I noticed, losing the puck a lot in, in board battles. That's something that I thought Leipzig was good at, but he struggled a little bit last night um, with with some of the board battles, especially on the power play. I, I do remember him giving up the puck quite a bit. A few positives from last night. Adam Godet gets his first professional point and an assist when he won the draw back to Troy Stetcher, who then took a shot that was deflected that went in, but Troy Stetcher now extends his point streak to four straight games. Pretty cool. Darren Archibald with the deflection. He gets his sixth NHL goal, but his first this season and his first game this season. So there are a couple, uh, you know, some, some positives come out of it. Ben Hutton continues strong play. Troy Stetcher on the blue line. Anders Nielsen, you can't really blame him. Maybe you want a better effort from him, or at least better luck from him on the first goal, the one that kind of snuck under him from Golgowski. But, um, you know, you can't really blame him for the the two uh, the shorthanded goal and then the, the one on the pullout giveaway, and then one was an empty netter. So um, I, I still think you go to back to Jacob Markstrom, and they're establishing Markstrom as the starter with some practice time with Ian Clark. Markstrom has won his last two starts, so I certainly see Markstrom playing this Saturday against Pittsburgh. That'll be tomorrow. We'll talk about that in a second. A couple other things. Delzato was okay. You know, I didn't think he was that bad um, in the first two games, but obviously the coaching staff wanted to get Ben Hutton in the lineup, and Hutton hasn't has seized that and hasn't looked back. As for Delzato, I think... Um, I think he was okay. He was a little weak on the first Arizona goal, you know, playing too far back. Not The gap control wasn't good on Golgowski. But for the rest of the game, I thought he was fine. I thought he skated the puck out well. He laid out a couple hits, so I thought he, he atoned himself well. And Biega was his usual feisty self, not nothing too flashy, not noticeable in a good way nor bad way. I, I think he was just there. So overall, you can't blame the D. Pulu had a rough game. He, had, he owned up. Can't really blame Nelson. Wanted more offense, but what do you expect when they're missing three other top forwards, like I said, 
Pedersen, Besser, and Berchi. So this is the kind of game where you just kind of put it in the rearview mirror. You say, yeah, we, we tried our best, and we have to manage the expectations. And if the expectation was to come out of the road trip at 500, uh, we'd be happy that, I think we'd all agree, though, you think it was the other way around. Uh, injuries notwithstanding, you'd think we would have had trouble with Vegas, but beat Arizona. One other thing from last night I want to talk about really quickly is I, uh, in my post-game live stream, my son Jacob, my 15-year-old Jacob, made an appearance in the last bit of it for a couple minutes, and he basically stole the show. Um, uh, I'm humble enough to admit that. I think everyone on there would rather talk to Jacob than me, but that's okay. I'm a, I'm a grown man. I can handle that. And so I'm going to look at bringing Jake on, maybe not regularly, but at least semi-regularly, because those three or uh, you know, two or three minutes that he was on with me was, was quite, I wouldn't say magical, but it was, it was a lot of fun. And I think a lot of you viewers really appreciated his insight or lack thereof. Okay, so let's talk about tomorrow. The Vancouver Canucks host the Pittsburgh Penguins, the same Penguins that just put up a nine spot. They beat Calgary nine to one. So Jacob Marston is going to, need to play well and my hope and my prayer is that we see both Elias Pettersson and Brock Besser because I would love to see Pettersson, Besser and Horvat go up against Crosby, Malkin and whoever you want to add in there, Kessel, Hornquist, Gensel, whatever it may be. So that's what I'm saying about. I'll bring my daughter Kayla, we'll be seeing a show in North Van in the afternoon instead of driving all the way back to Richmond, pick up someone else and then go to the game. Kayla is the lucky beneficiary tomorrow. We're going to see a show in the afternoon in North Van, hang out, eat some dinner, and then catch Sidney Crosby and the Pittsburgh Penguins. Coming into town, and a last bonus, another bonus for me is my, my really good friend, my dear friend and co-collaborator on my Canucks songs, Marie Huey, will be singing the anthems at the game on Saturday. So lots to look forward to between Marie singing the anthems, spending time with my daughter Kayla, and of course seeing Sidney Crosby. First time I'm seeing him live. Um, because every other Penguins game, I've only gone to a couple. One of them, he was injured. I th actually, I've only gone to one in the eight years I've been a season ticket holder. I've only gone to one. The rest my buddy's gone to or we've sold or given away the ticket. So I'm excited to see Sidney Crosby for the first time live. And of course, if it means facing a lineup that has Brock Besser returning and Elias Pettersson returning, that is a big bonus as well. Canucks fans, leave a comment below. Love to read, react, reply as best I can. What do you think of last night's game? Are you happy with the road trip? Are we hard on Pouliot or, or you know, do you think he'll be able to bounce back? And what do you expect? What are you looking forward to from Saturday night? Uh, is it the obvious ones, the Crosby, the Malkins, and the Bessers, and the Patterson's? Or is there another part of the game that you're looking forward to? Whatever it may be, I'll check in tomorrow morning with a quick pregame preview. Otherwise, have a great day. Subscribe if you'd like to. Like this video if you'd like to. And God bless. And go Canesco.